Logic Pro for the iPad is really quite amazing. If you consider what the Apple developers have done to take all of those Logic Pro features and somehow incorporate them into the form factor of the iPad with touch control, it's quite an accomplishment. I'd go so far as to say that at this point in time, Logic Pro is perhaps the best there has been so far. So what are the compromises? Is it fair even really to compare Logic Pro on a Mac versus Logic on an iPad? Well, let's just start with the obvious one that everyone's been talking about and that's plug-in compatibility. If you're running Logic on a Mac, by now you've probably made use of a lot of third-party plugins, not just everything that comes with Apple. Those plugins are delivered in several different formats, usually the AU format, which is a component file, sits on your Mac, they also come as a VST and a VST3. But for iPad, the only compatible format that you can take advantage of is really the AUV3 format. And not every vendor offers the same plugins that you're used to using for iOS. That just hasn't happened yet. I've got a variety of plugins and virtual instruments. And when I go into Logic, they are all there, which is kind of cool. So if you pick a track and then click on the plugins button down at the bottom, you can add any of these audio effects. First, it'll show you the Logic ones, which will work both on iPad and on Mac. And then you've got the audio unit specific ones. These would be the AUV3 one, dustbin. It's going to add it in. There it is. And I can pick presets and anything I need. And there's some big vendors here that are worth considering. I use the Complete 14 bundle from Native Instruments. I also use a bunch of plugins from UAD, Universal Audio, and I'm used to using those. And it's hard to imagine doing everything that I do in the studio on my iPad without those plugins. Will Native Instruments and Universal Audio eventually offer those plugins for iOS? That's really hard to say. It took Native Instruments a long, long time to adapt to the Apple Silicon. It seemed to take them a long time before all of their instruments that are included in the bundle would work. So making that move again to iOS, I don't think that's going to happen quickly. So on top of the major vendors, you've also got lots of small vendors that deliver plugins. And if you're like me, you've probably got 50 to 100 of those that you've become comfortable with on your Mac. And some of them will be available for iOS, but a lot of them are not. So you have to think about how does that affect my workflow? Do I do everything on my iPad, move it onto the Mac, and then incorporate those plugins that I'm used to and familiar with? Plugin compatibility, I think, is going to be an issue for quite a while. It's not something that's going to go away. And it is a bit of a compromise if you can't use the familiar plugins you like on your iPad. Another compromise is the software you use with your audio interface. If you've looked at a lot of the videos and a lot of the promotional information about Logic for iPad, they tend to always show certain audio interfaces like the UAD Volt. And the Volt has most of its controls built into the hardware. But the reality is that most audio interfaces come with software. Software that you can use for mixing, software for adding plugins, and features like the loopback or incorporating system audio into your recording. That software does not run on iOS. In my own case, I have two audio interfaces. I have an Apollo X4 that I use in the studio and I make extensive use of the console software. And it's within the console software that I add the plugins I own from UAD. So compression, EQ, uh, even auto-tune and some of those features I'm using inside of the console software which doesn't run on iOS. I also have an Evo 4 audio interface from Audient and it's great but once again the software for mixing and loopback available for Windows and Mac it is not available for iOS. Both of those interfaces the X4 and the Evo 4 both work fine with an iPad, but I have no access to the software. None of the mixing capabilities, 
loopback, or plugins. I think you'll find that this is the case with almost every major vendor. They deliver some software with their audio interface and people have gotten used to incorporating that into their recording process when they're recording and tracking. Well, unless it's available for iOS, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. And it's kind of funny how this is sold to you is that on an iPad, Apple, Logic, and the iPad itself will say you can use any class compliant device. And that is true. Any class compliant device will work. But when you hear the word class compliant, it suggests that the software you're using or you're used to using on a Mac or Windows will also work on an iPad. That's not the case. In fact, class compliant is something less than what you currently have. It's the common denominator. And I think it's going to be a long time before Apple builds something more than class compliance into the iPad device. Another compromise is control surfaces. And this might matter to you and it might not. I make use of MIDI controllers, pad controllers, even digital mixing consoles that use the control surface capabilities built into Logic. All of those control surface features are actually missing from the iPad version of Logic, and it's no surprise, really. It may not even be fair to bring this up as an issue because, in response, Apple has built all kinds of features into the iPad to minimize the need for a third-party or external MIDI control surface. A feature that you find on Logic Pro for iPad that isn't on Logic Pro for a Mac are the play services. So as you might expect, you've got a keyboard. And you can resize this to be more than one keyboard if you need more. But you can also choose fretboard. You can bend notes. You get that guitar strumming type of effect. You've got chord strips. You've got something called guitar strips. And you've got drum pads, which if you choose a drum track, or cowbell. So if you're used to physical faders and encoders and knobs and transport controls that are built into your MIDI keyboard, those are not going to work on your iPad, unfortunately. Is that coming in the future? It might. But I can tell you the barrier really isn't logic. The barrier is iOS. Any music app that runs on iOS that uses MIDI is that you can send note information to and from the iPad but you can't send CC messages successfully. The concept of continuous change messages from a third-party device, that hasn't really been incorporated yet into iOS. So it's not only missing from Logic, it's missing from Beatmaker 3 and Cubasis and AUM and all the other apps that you might be using for music production on an iPad. Now I can tell you that there is MIDI learn and MIDI mapping capabilities built into a lot of these apps. In Koala Sampler, for example, I was able to set it up so that buttons on my Launchpad X will execute play, stop, execute individual samples. But in all cases, I'm actually interpreting a MIDI note, not a CC message. The issue around the control surfaces is an interesting one because I'm talking about recreating the environment you have in your studio on your iPad, and that probably isn't the point. Another thing people may have noticed by now is that Ultrabeat is not there on the iPad. Ultrabeat was a pretty old drum machine. It had a good sequencer and it had many drum kits built into it, but you can largely do everything that you could have done in Ultrabeat in Drum Machine Designer, so it's not a huge loss. Still, there are, are going to be people out there that were very committed to Ultrabeat. They like the sequencer and they like the drum kits, so there'll be a bit of backlash there. In fact, I'm not too concerned about instruments matching one-to-one. -one. The concept is that anything that you create on your iPad, you'd be able to migrate 
over to your Mac and all those instruments would be there. And that might be true for Logic instruments, but what about all your third-party instruments? That might be the majority of what you use inside your composition. They're not going to be in sync between these two platforms. So you're going to need a strategy to overcome those differences. For me, I see it as a bit of a one-way street. I see coming up with ideas and doing some initial composition on the iPad with Logic, moving it onto the Mac, and probably not going back to the iPad after that. Because once I incorporate third-party plugins, once I make use of the control surface and all the capabilities I have in my studio, I'm probably not going to go back to using it on my iPad. This issue has more to do with the way we think of Logic Pro for the iPad. I see it as a companion app. I don't see it as a replacement. I think the companion mode is more realistic and I don't have any issue with uh, the capabilities or the way it's being delivered. In fact, the subscription-based approach for Logic for iPad doesn't bother me one bit. Another compromise is going to be access to all of your recording assets. Inherently, the iPad has less storage than you probably have on your Mac or in your home studio or your commercial studio. In my case, I have a very extensive samples library. It's not specific to one vendor. It's far beyond the 15 gigabytes that gets downloaded when you install Logic for the iPad. My sample library is more in the neighborhood of 500 gigabytes, so half a terabyte. And I've long struggled with the issue over making that available for iOS music production. So one technique I've tried is I loaded all of my samples onto the iCloud and I can copy and paste samples as I need them from the cloud to my device. That works fine as long as I've got good internet connectivity, uh, but I am spoiled. When I'm in my studio or at home, I've got very fast internet, gigabit speed, and I can quickly download a sample, drag it into Logic and make use of it. However, when I'm in remote locations, the speed isn't quite there. In fact, it's become impractical for me to rely on all of the samples being stored in a cloud service like iCloud or Dropbox or whatever you tend to use. So instead, I've copied them all to an SSD drive that I take with me on the road. That SSD drive can connect to the USB-C port on my iPad. That gives me local access to my sample library. It's much faster, and I don't have to rely upon my internet connection. Although the internet and connectivity seems to be ubiquitous, the performance varies from place to place. And we aren't quite at the stage where you can store all of your recording assets on the cloud and use them interactively. So summing up the compromises, the things that are missing from the iPad are plug-in compatibility, audio interface software, control surfaces, ultra beat, and sample management. But by the same token, there are features that you don't get on the Mac that you do from iPad. You get the touch screen, you get portability, there are those play surfaces, and there's two instruments, the beat breaker and the alchemy sampler, which haven't found their way yet into the Logic Mac version. Hey, I try to stay current. And if you're watching this video, I hope it's useful to you. If you like it, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and click the notification if you want to be notified when I come out with new videos. Thanks for watching.